Hey Design Milk, it's Sebastian Erasuris. You can find me on Instagram at Sebastian Studio. Artist designer based in New York and I've been working with tech and augmented reality for the past three years. The first thing to consider is that due to the pandemic for the first time in world history, every single museum, art gallery, art fair, design fair, design store is closed. And if creatives can't exhibit, they can't sell. And as a consequence, their regularly precarious condition is about to become much more precarious. Now, augmented reality is one of those tools that can allow us to very quickly reach clients and allow them to see in their own home works as if they were literally there. Basically, today there's already a billion phones, smartphones, that are AR ready. And through sites like the one we just built called All World, all as in all of us, world.io, you can self publish your art or design in augmented reality for free. And you can generate an exhibition, a link, and attach that link to your website or text or email that link to a client and allow them to see through their phone immediately life size a work as if it was right in front of them. That allows them to then decide to contact you and make a purchase, thus driving sales and accelerating the possibility for us to continue subsisting through this period. Now that's in the absolute immediate problem. Nevertheless, augmented reality will be the future art and design world for most of us. The first reason is quite simple. The vast majority of the exhibitions that you've seen in art or design do not require for you to touch them. Actually, every art gallery and every museum has a little sign that says, do not touch the art. As a consequence, if we're not allowed and do not need to touch the art or the design in order to experience it, then it is simply dependent on the quality of its visibility. Now, today we already have a quite decent augmented reality architecture built into our phones and through simple tools, simple uh, AR apps can see a relatively good experience already. Now, you've got to remember that that current experience is the equivalent to one of the first digital cameras when they initially came out. There were one megapixels. The quality was nowhere as near as they, they are today. Nevertheless, technology and augmented reality will continue to work exponentially. So check out every six months and you will see that technology is doubling the quality. Now, why is augmented reality important? It's important because it's the biggest technological change that is about to completely transform the way in which we live. And this is going to happen due to three main reasons. The first one is 5G. 5G has nothing to do with uh, coronavirus. For fuck's sake, people, check your sources. 5G is the ability to generate at 100x the download speed that we have actually been able to do via broadband today. As a consequence, we'll be able to download experiences that are incredibly heavy, that you could barely render in your computer, but we'll be able to download in a second. That is crucial in terms of the pipelines. At the same time, we have the core architecture. Android and Apple are developing the core architecture needed for any simple app to build upon their technology. So everyone will be able to develop AR solutions over those core technologies. And the third one and most important will be augmented reality headsets. Because right now, Amazon, Snap, Apple, Google, Facebook, Samsung, and several other companies are all competing to come out with the next edition of what Google Glass once was and failed. But this time, hopefully a functioning, much more improved, um, set of headsets that actually is uh, accepted because its uh, virtues, its benefits will be so good that you will be happy to wear a headset that provides you with all kinds of information and visuals. Now, we will go from walking around the street looking at a little tablet the size of our hands that has already transformed our planet 
right? This phone through which I'm talking to you guys, the iPhone is 12 years old only. In the simple fraction of 12 years, the apps that are inside it, each one a giant company has completely disrupted our entire ecosystem and taken out of the rain monopolies that it took decades to build. In just 12 years, every single one of those companies disrupted everything. And all of that has been up to now con contained inside a little flat screen that we walk around like zombies. Well, imagine what's going to happen when all of that information is in your eyes. When augmented reality starts responding to your arms, when it starts reading your iris, right? When it starts getting feedback from your face, our entire way of uh, interacting with the world will change. And naturally, for art, design, and architecture, everything will change. For architecture, it makes no sense to have permanent designs for buildings when you can switch them, just like that. I can walk into the interior of a hotel and be received by a concierge that says, Sebastian, welcome to uh, the W Hotel. Today we have a beautiful design downloaded um, just for this week. It's by Diller Scofidio and Renfro. And please check up next week. We're going to have a design by Saha Hadid Architects. Every single architectural firm could be summoned and used so that instead of maybe spending $10 million on the interior of a hotel, you break it down and parcel it into multiple changing interiors so that the guests are always welcomed by a fresh new design experience. What's amazing about that? Well, the first part is that the vast quantity of the budget is focused on creation, on ideas, on ideation, and not on fabrication, shipping, installing, and a giant footprint. So it becomes much more efficient and it therefore allows also for the constant changing of design. Granted, of course, yes, we need surfaces to be able to use. We continue to need to be able to sit on things and there will be some objects that we will want to continue to keep. But the, for the vast majority of objects, there are decorative ones that we do not need a real relationship with. Those can just switch like that, like you would switch a song, right? Because imagine if I was to buy, say, that sculpture, I need to keep it in my, head, in my room for quite a long time because I need to get my money back as a collector. But that doesn't really make sense from a physical standpoint. It would be the equivalent in music as to buying a song that needs to be displayed and played again and again and again. Every day, I wake up and it's the same song playing. I come back from work, same song playing. Forever, all the time, again and again and again, until I call a couple of art handlers that come with gloves to take the song away and store it. That makes zero sense, right? Same thing, therefore, is going to happen for design and, and so on. It's, What's beautiful about augmented reality is that it entirely liberates the creative community. I'm extremely fortunate as a designer and an artist that I pretty much get to fabricate whatever I come up with. I can summon up the resources or fund the project myself or get one of my galleries to pay for it. I have clients who are willing to pay enormous amounts of money for one of my pieces. But what would I prefer? Would I rather someone pays $50,000 for a piece? Or would I prefer a thousand people pay $50 for a virtual piece? The beauty of a virtual piece is that first, I just gained a thousand collectors instead of just one. They're more likely to continue buying from me. Their house can never be saturated with work because they will be constantly changing it. So it provides all kinds of really beautiful scenarios. Now, that's the technology and the general uses. You've got to imagine that just like we can switch things around, we can also place things permanently on location. So our entire world will start being populated by content. Now, imagine I walk into the street outside and I was to have all of the content of everyone in augmented reality immediately at the same time. The level of contamination visually would be crazy. 
but that would be the equivalent to putting on Spotify and playing every single song at the same time. No one does that. The same will happen with your outside reality. Your reality will be different from other people's realities. It will be filtered and tailored to your interests. And that's when you have to remember that your headphones are augmenting your hearing. Right? So in the same manner as your viewing will be augmented in a couple of years, well, we already give for granted that our hearing is augmented. And we're fine and happy with it. And we can all be uh, waiting for uh, an airplane, sitting down in the same room, and 50 people are listening to different data and different information. Same exact thing is going to happen with visuals. Some visuals will also have a priority over a place. Maybe they'll pay uh, promotional money to get uh, ads and have uh, the capability of only being visible in that location. There will be all kinds of interesting things happening with the layering of data and location. And all kinds of interesting things happening with the way I am prompted new data and new information. Now, as creators, We've got to think of this new technology as the democratic platform of the future where anyone can create anything they imagine and place it anywhere they want or everywhere they want. And their content we come up with is going to be key to making this something attractive. Because it doesn't make sense to continue to fabricate the same type of art as we did before in this new medium. I can easily create a painting and place it up on a wall, or I can create a 3D sculpture and place it in front of you. What I can't do in the real world is maybe what I should do in this one. So why not create augmented reality exhibitions that adapt to the different viewers, that evolve over time, that I get to change and transform as I continue to mature. Sculptures that are immersive, ones that uh, react and interact. All of those possibilities, which will be incredibly complex and inspiring, are what will guarantee that this will be the future art form in which we will all connect. Once again, always think of old technology, right? So just think of uh, Twitter. When it first started, everyone was using Twitter to simply announce a location they were in. I am coming out of the gym, walking into the sushi restaurant. Well, a few months after that, people were immediately using Twitter to summon up entire revolutions in the Middle East, or entire communities of journalists were connecting and sharing information. Scientists were sharing papers, all on Twitter. We've seen what happened in YouTube and how the technology evolved over time from cat videos to some of the most interesting short format content. Or that a podcast that was completely ignored a few years ago can today rival in audience the entire broadcasting network of CNN. Augmented reality today is a shitty, mediocre, gadgety, gimmicky apparent technology. But that's only because you're seeing the very, very beginning of it. If you get in now, it will be like buying a URL in 1995 and being able to own whatever .com you wanted. It will be like starting a blog or a YouTube channel before everyone else when you still get the opportunity to, to create a giant following. Augmented reality is the future art world. It's the future design world. It's the future architectural world. You need to get on it now, while it is still basic, while it is still hard and demanding, while it requires learning. You will thank me later, I promise. Um, Sebastian Studio on Instagram, meetsebastian.com, uh, and then go check out our app. It's very simple, filled with problems, but as good as we can make it within this time, allworld.io, all as in all of us, world.io. Thank you so much, Design Milk. Take care.